Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and today we are talking about new cartel pack items. And it's quite interesting because uh, back when the alliance packs were being released, we did not have a lot of data mining information about cartel packs. And a actually I was getting the information off of websites and stuff and the data mining people uh, like a day before the pack was released, which kind of sucks. But now uh, we, you know, we've got the manipulator pack that came really early. Then we had the scavenger pack items that were data mined and the scavenger pack isn't even out yet. And now we have the eternal command cartel packs and even other items that are coming in patch 5.0 and probably going to be uh, you know obviously associated with the release of knights of the eternal throne so in this video i'm going to be going through the items that are coming out of the eternal command pack and then i'll put another video which is going to be talking about some of the other items that have been data mined which are going to be introduced sometime in patch 5.0 so probably after kotet's release or yeah well after kotet's release but not sure um how far after kotet maybe it's going to be the second pack it might be kind of a mix between um some of these items are going to be in the second pack some of the items might be later we don't really know but these are the items that are definitely going to be coming out of the eternal command pack but uh but if i know by where it's going to be that they're probably going to change the name of this cartel pack like five times before they actually release it now the one really cool thing about just basically these cartel items these cartel market items that are coming in patch 5.0 is that the armor sets are absolutely amazing i mean these armor sets just blow me away even the bronze armor sets looks pretty cool uh, and then that's kind of all the information we have. We don't have much information about the mounts and stuff. But So this is basically going to be just focusing on the armor sets. Now the first one that you might see up on the screen here is the Elite Pursuers armor set. This is a bronze armor set. And as you guys can see, very nice for a bronze armor set. The helmet is kind of pretty generic, but the upper body armor looks super nice. And um, you can't really see from this image, but it seems as though it's kind of got a cape, very similar to what Cassus Fett's upper body armor looks like. Uh, this upper body armor seems to have a cape that kind of drapes down on the right side. Once again, you can't really tell. It might just be part of the frontal piece of the upper body armor, but it does seem as though there's a cape, and that looks really cool. That's going to be a very nice upper body armor, especially for people who are dressing their characters up as Mandalorians. Uh, the upper body, as I was mentioning, the helmet itself is kind of generic. There's a lot of models like those. Um, I'm thinking back to the Outlander Gorilla kind of stuff. It looks very similar, but nonetheless, not bad for a bronze armor set, honestly. Uh, there have been much crappier bronze armor sets released. The next bronze armor set is the Seasoned Professionals armor set. Looks pretty cool. There's really nothing to, much to say about it, uh, but it's not bad, I mean... Helmet's, helmet's pretty unique, upper body armor, I could see a lot of characters using it, and uh, when I look at the stuff, I kind of look for resale value, whether I think people will actually pay decent prices for it in the future, e especially when the cartel pack's been embargoed and this stuff's kind of a little bit more rare. Uh, obviously, when it first gets released, the market will be flooded, and these bronze items, which are super, super common drops from these packs, they will flood the market. But, uh, but these are going to be good items basically to buy low, sell high. Uh, they don't look crappy and I do see people paying decent prices for them in the future. With the silver armor sets, I'll go with I'll go to the bad one first and then the good one I'll put second. I mean, this the, the silver armor set I'm going to show you after this one is absolutely amazing. But the one you see on the screen here is Jedi Survivalist armor set. I don't know, the, the whole size proportion kind of seems kind of off. I mean, the head looks so much bigger than the body. Um, I don't know, it just kind of looks weird. Uh, the hood also, I'm not kind of digging it. I mean, I don't really like how that hood looks. It's not a, a generic hood, like what, the, you know, basically the hoods you see in game. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't look the same. I'm not a, an overall fan of the headpiece either. The upper body armor, though, is pretty nice. I think it would be nicer if it actually didn't have the hood. Uh, but knowing Bioware, we're not going to get a hood toggle or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, that's unfortunate. But overall... That's kind of just a silver armor set. You can't really expect everything to be that good. But the next one, I'm excited to talk about this one. This is called the Alliance Emissaries Armor Set. Uh, this is probably easily one of the nicest silver armor sets I have ever seen introduced into the game. One of the nicest. Uh, the upper body armor looks absolutely amazing, honestly. Uh, very, very Zakul-like. Some people are even saying... Um, I don't know, it kind of resembles Valkorian's armor set, but not really. But it just kind of has that feel to it, like you're looking at someone from Zakul Royalty or something. It's very nicely ornamented. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, this armor set does not have a headpiece associated with it. And the only reason I don't like that is because when you're opening a pack or something, and if you get the supplementary body armor, it's kind of useless because no one cares about the bracers. Uh, this belt isn't particularly nice, and that's all you get out of it. 
but if it, this had a headpiece associated with it, you'd also get the headgear, and that usually sells for quite a nice uh, sum of money on the GTN. But nonetheless, this upper body armor is going to look absolutely amazing. And this is definitely one of those items you want to look into buying low, selling high, because um, silver armor sets are pretty common drops, and recently actually the prices have been pretty high on the GTN, like the prices of the silver armor pieces that have been dropping from the Manipulator and the Gemini and the... What was the one before that? The, uh, what's it called? The Battler Packs. Okay, there it came to me. I was thinking Betrayed for some reason, but no, it's the Battler Packs. Uh, the silver armor pieces from those packs have been actually going for like 50, 60k on the GTN, but it's not uncommon to see these things drop to like 20 to 30k, and that is a great price. Like to pick up this upper body armor for 20 to 30k is going to be a really, really great deal because I see this selling for a very, very high amount of credits in the future. Okay, on to the gold armor sets, and now this is this is really where the money is. I mean, these look absolutely amazing. The first one is the Emperor Mantles armor set. Now, this one is gold, obviously. The upper body armor, once again, blows me away. It looks really, really good. Also, uh, one thing I didn't mention with the previous ones is the gloves. The gloves for all these armor sets look very good as well. Uh, they have that kind of style where they have just the glove, and they have this shell. The shell that kind of goes on your wrist. I really like that design. Uh, now with this Emperor Mantle's armor set, you do have this um, helmet, very unique, I've got to say that. I haven't seen a design like this in the game thus far, but I wouldn't say it looks that nice. But I think the real highlight of this armor set is the upper body armor, which does kind of resemble Valkorians. I think they kind of meant it to be uh, this in thing that's inspired. I mean, obviously it's not Valkorian's upper body armor. His uh, upper body armor looks a lot nicer. But once again, it kind of gives you that feel that this is probably... Sorry, my narration cut out there, but um, but I'm just continuing on here. Uh, it is called the Emperor's Mantles Armor Set. So, once again, something an Emperor would wear. And the final um, gold armor set is called the Imperial Bastion's Armor Set. Once again, absolutely blows me away. It looks really cool. That helmet is very, very unique. But, uh, but I think what's really cool is the upper body armor with those spikes and stuff. We haven't had spiky upper body armor in a very long time. I think the last really good one was the Reavers, which was obviously supposed to resemble um, Darth Mars armor set, but this one's also very nice. So that is definitely something to look forward to. So we've got three weapons coming with this pack. We have the Grand Tech F11D Dual Saber, uh, the Grand Tech F11D Lightsaber, and the Grand Tech F11D Assault Cannon. Now I'm not too concerned about the Assault Cannon. Those things never seem to sell that well. Uh, this one looks pretty good, but once again, there's just such a limited um, s uh, buyer base for these things. I mean, just commandos could use them. Even then, there aren't many commandos in the game right now. And they all have such nice uh, assault cannons already available. I don't see many people wanting to buy this, so those tend to drop really, really low on the GTN. But the lightsaber looks pretty nice, and the dual saber, uh, yeah, it's just basically, you know, both of those lightsabers put together. Um, there's really nothing much to say about it. No matter how nice the hilt is, usually now people are looking for uh, things that are cool about the saber itself. So for example, that's why like weapon tunings and stuff are just so popular. People don't really care about the hilts anymore. They care more about what effect is this going to have on the saber because that's what people see. That's one of the reasons why the Volatile Conqueror's lightsaber, the Arbiter's saber, those sell so well. Because they actually have this really cool effect on the saber. So um, unless this has that, I don't think it's going to sell too well. It's nothing to really get that excited about. But the hilt is nice nonetheless. Now, unfortunately, we don't have much more information about this pack. We do have these two speeders. One is the GSI UDT-01 Speedster. Uh, just a crappy bronze mount. No one really cares about a reskinned version of a speeder that we already have access to. Uh, many, many other models in the game. And this, those models sell for like 10,000 credits on the GTN. So... And that's just one of those kind of junky items that are going to be in the pack. But we do have the Emissary Shuttle, which is another kind of droid sidecar, but this time it's driven by a Sky Trooper, which is pretty cool. But we already have like so many droid sidecars in the game right now. Uh, we just recently got one from the Manipulator pack, or maybe it's coming in the Scavenger pack, I'm not sure. But we're gonna, we basically already have like tons of them. So I'm not sure why they keep giving us more of this kind of stuff, because it doesn't seem to sell too well, and it's not too popular, I don't think. Especially with so many already in the game, I think people who have wanted it have already gotten it. But, uh, but nonetheless, it's pretty cool that it's driven by a Sky Trooper. Other than that, we do have things like the Survivalist Tauntaun, the Command Corsair, the Royal Furnock, 
and the TC6 Voyager, but the images for those are not available at this time, so we can't really look and see how they, um, you know, whether they have flourishes associated with it or whether they look cool or something. What's interesting though, and what we don't need an image for, is the Royal Fire Knock, or Fur Knock, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But, um, but that's actually a really, really interesting mount, I think, because that was in the Star Wars Rebels TV show. For those of you who haven't seen it, I'll throw an image up on the screen here. Uh, this was in the show, and it, this is what a fire knock is. And if you guys can tell, it's very big. It's huge. It looks very cool. It's dark. And um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how that plays out in the game, whether it's going to be that large in the game, maybe as big as a Rancor or something. And if it actually is, then I think that's going to be a very, very popular mount. And not like some of the other really bad gold mount we've seen introduced in the game recently. Um, I think it's going to sell probably very, very well. So that is definitely something to get excited for. Aside from that, we have the Advanced Viridian Corona Color Crystal and the Galactic Command Tuning. But, uh, but those images, once again, aren't available. So that's all the information we have on this cartel pack. Uh, I'm definitely very excited about it. I love these armor sets. It's been a very, very long time since we've had really, really good armor sets introduced into the game, and I really, I really am loving those gold armor sets, and especially this, that silver armor set I was talking about. And, um, and yeah, as I mentioned, the mounts are something to get excited for. And when we have, when I have more images or when that stuff is data mined, I'll be sure to make a video on that, talking about uh, some of that new stuff we're going to be getting. But till then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will stay tuned on my channel, and I will see you in the next one.